Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here joining you on this Sunday morning as we all start off new weeks, uh, at least most of us, depending on uh, when you start your week. I start mine on Sunday. Um, uh, Sunday is a very important day in how I set out and start my week and how I measure and plan um, very calculated in the way I do things. Um, doesn't mean that I don't adjust. Doesn't mean that I don't uh, allow myself to evolve with the need. It just seems, it means that I have purpose for every moment. I have purpose uh, for my time. And when it calls for me to move away from something I have planned, I'm able to do it easily and move into what is required of me but it has to have a purpose before I get to it. I never allow myself to get to a moment in which I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do because that moment is passing while I'm sitting there thinking. So either a moment is spent like today, a great deal of today is gonna to be actually preparing moments in the future, uh, setting what I'm gonna be doing at a particular time, setting what's important, what's prioritized, what's going on. Or it'll be actually in carrying out what's been set forth and evolving and adopting and adapting and all of this other stuff that's required for me to be effective in what I do. But first and foremost, it starts with me sitting up saying, OK, every second has a purpose, whether it's spending time with the family, whether it's giving my wife some specific time she needs, whether it's cooking for my wife like I did it uh, on yesterday, whether it's. Getting on my wife's nerves, which is a part of my daily plan. I got to get on her nerves because that's how we have fun. Uh, whatever it is, uh, it has, a. I mean, you know, and, and, and it changes. Like uh, yesterday, uh, a portion of the day was spent at the beach with the kids. Uh, that wasn't in my plan until she hit me up the night before and said, hey, you want to go to the beach? And it's like, hey, this is what the family needs. So I changed. But I had a plan for the time that was spent at the beach, but something more important and more pressing came. I adopted. I moved toward it. We did it. We had a great time. I came back. I made up for it. I finished making up for it today. And it will never be. It, 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 it turned out to be exactly what it needed to be at that time. It's just that you have to have some intentions for every second or every moment, 86,400 seconds in a day. There has to be an intent for every one of them or you lose them because the moment you enter into a second and you don't have something planned for it, the time you spend thinking of something to do, you've lost it. So you've got to have an intent for it. Now, when, when the demand comes that you make an adjustment, make a change, adopt to something new or adapt to a need or a demand, you do it. That's how you get it. You've got to have an intent. But you also have to have a willingness to adapt. But if you don't have an intent, you get there, you're lost, you lose time. So much of so many of us throw away time because we don't prepare for it. We just get there and say, well, what, you know, we're going to figure it out. No, you're wasting time. You're wasting time. Hold one second. Somebody's at the door. Hold on. I got in this. I don't know. I can't even pause this thing. I'm going to have to get back. All right, everybody. I'm back with you. I apologize for that disruption. That never happens on a Sunday morning. It happens, uh, but never on a Sunday morning. But uh, one of the downsides to running an office out of the house, but it is what it is. But anyway, I'm back. Um, like I said, you've got to have an intent uh, for your time. It doesn't mean that you don't adapt. It doesn't mean that you don't make the necessary changes along the way to meet the demands of a moment. But you've got to have an intent because you enter a moment of intent with a certain level of purpose, with a certain level of force. When you get to an area where you're just going to try to figure out what to do once you get there, there's so much going on in the world around you that you hardly ever draw yourself together with enough conciseness to really approach the moment with force. You may get some things done, but most of the time it's just the things that are easy to do in the moment, not the things that really need to get done. When you sit up and you have a time where you set your intent for a certain amount of time, you may set your intent for the day. 
early in the morning. I set my intent for the week, then I revisit it early in the morning and make some obvious adjustments that I can say, okay, I'm not gonna do this today, I'm gonna do this today, uh, and I make the changes early, then I go into it, and then I make the necessary adjustments and adaptations as I move through the day. But I have to have a level of intent to get started. And so you would, however you do it, you've got to have that level of intent. You've got to have the ability to move into a moment with force. And you do that by setting intent. Uh, before we talk about the, uh, what we're going to talk about this morning, which is going to be short, this is not a five minute uh, a fire, which is never five minutes anyway, but this is not a five minutes uh, a fire segment. This is just me doing what I do on Sunday. But don't forget to get your copy of Critical Mass, uh, the phenomenon of next level, next level living. Uh, the official release day was this past Tuesday. Uh, we are getting things out. Uh, we're starting the, di uh, the move into distribution. Uh, setting up all the distribution and everything for the book, and uh, that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. But you can order your book, your signed copy now. Uh, get that book. Um, I'm telling you, it's some great things in it. Uh, we're already looking into what we're going to do with the follow up uh, because it was initially 700 plus pages, uh, and we said it's, we've got to do something to streamline it and to break it down. So that's already another volume that's sitting there waiting to be put on. Uh, paper and deliver it. So keep your eyes open and your ears open for that. But this is what we do. We got it to under 400 pages and we're going, you know, here it is. Uh, get your copy. But let's talk. Uh, I posted earlier uh, on a number of different social media channels the fact that until you put your dreams or visions or ideas to work for you until you have scheduled goals that have dates and parameters surrounding them. Your dreams are simply images in your mind um, that are loosely planted. It's not until you engage these ideas with intent. See, there's that word again. It's not until you place intent on the vision not until you set a time frame and schedule it. See, when you schedule it, it becomes real. Why? Because when I schedule it, I set a sense of urgency to perform it. And the greater the vision, the greater the dream, the more urgent it becomes depending upon the time frame in which you give yourself to accomplish the goals associated with the vision. See, when I have an idea in my head and say, man, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. You can dream about it the rest of your life. But until you schedule it, there's no sense of urgency. It's just one of these days. One of, how many one of these days moments have you had in your life? One of these days, I'm going to start my own business. One of these days, I'm going to get married. One of these days, I'm going to finish my education. One of these days, I'm going to be. One of these days, I'm going to do. As long as it's just one of these days, there's no sense of urgency to it. There's nothing that will drive you when you wake up in the morning to get things done. See, when, when you have a goal, there's a sense of urgency because there's a certain amount of time before that goal comes, and you either have to say, I did it or I didn't, and give an account for it. See, when you sit up and you set a time frame, you put a sense of urgency to it because now I don't have forever. See, as long as I just wake up saying one of these days, one of these days can keep on going until I die. And I never have to be accountable for what I said I'm going to do because there was no time frame for which I can measure whether or not I've done it. Now, what I don't want you to get caught up in is having a goal that you set and don't reach by the time frame. Very rarely do I actually hit a goal that I initially set on the time frame in which I set it. And the reason for that is I don't set dwarf goals. I don't have colorless visions and, 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 and colorless and, 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 and menial and minute goals. I set them so huge that they are intimidating to me. If my goals aren't intimidating to me, if my goals don't seem overwhelming, then, then I feel like I'm failing. My designer, I don't care how you view your faith, you've got to understand that your life has purpose. When you evacuate purpose from your life, it creates capriciousness because that's nothing for you to aim after. That's nothing for you to set after. And when you don't have a set target 
that you know belongs to you. It's your space. It's your place. It's where you do your thing. If you don't have that, as soon as it gets rough, you recalibrate, you relocate, you redirect. Why? Because you're getting away from the discomfort. But when you have a target, something for which you know you're created, and that target is all you see, it doesn't matter what's put in front of you. You recalibrate, but you don't change the target. You may go over, you may go under, you may go through, you may go around, but you are going towards the target. And so I fix myself to get every ounce out of me. And I hold myself accountable to it. And I'll be honest with you, there are some times I get to a situation and I get to a place and I ask myself, you didn't get it done. Did you not get it done because you gave everything you had and you're just a little behind? Or did you not get it done because you didn't give enough? And if I'm honest with myself, and if I'm honest with you, I've got to say there are some times that I got sidetracked. There are some times that I didn't get up early enough. There are some times that I didn't stay up late enough. There are some times that I got distracted. That's the reality of it. But instead of beating myself up for them, I say, okay, well, what are we going to do about it? We're going to sit down. We're going to recalibrate. We're going to get back to it. And what I can tell you is that everything that I've ever set up for my life, I failed forward until I hit it. You got to be willing to fail forward. You got to be willing to set your goals so large that they intimidate you. I believe it was Stephen Furtick that said, if your goals that you have, if the vision, the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, there's a good chance it's insulting God. See, that you, 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 your, your design is not indicative of mediocrity. Your design is not indicative of being average. Your design, when you search your design, when you look at the intricacies of how you're made, that the way, the things, not the things that make you common to everyone else, the things that distinguish you from everyone else, you will find that you were not designed for mediocrity, that you are not designed for being average, that there's something inside of you that dictates and demands that you perform at a level of excellence that cannot be questioned. But what happens is we fall into the category of commonality. We find the place of comfort. So you don't get greatness. You don't get exceptional. You don't get phenomenal by performing in the, in, in the mindset and maze and, uh, of mediocrity. You get it by stepping outside of that comfort and doing what you are designed to do in a way that only you can do it, demanding excellence of yourself on a daily basis, putting your vision to where every last one of you have a dream and a vision. I don't care where you grew up. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your home situation was, what your socioeconomic situation was. I don't care how many mistakes you make. At some point in your life, you had something inside of you that fueled you that you thought, man, I would love to. Then life happened. Yeah, you know, uh, you went through some things. You, you you had parents who didn't know how to parent. You had one parent that may not have been there, or maybe both parents not been there. You had poverty that set up the parameters of what you were exposed to. So those limited, uh, 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 the limited accessibility gave you a certain idea or reality that you adopted for yourself and it locked you into a reality that wasn't even real, but simply a point in time of where you exist. That's not your reality, that's an event, but you adopted it and so you stopped looking outside of that parameter, you stopped looking outside of what was going on and you took that to be what was your reality and the more you focus on a reality at any given moment, the more power you give it to influence your future realities, which are events in, in time that are progressive. Every second is a new reality. Every second comes with new potential. But if all you've got when you enter that moment is what you've been holding on to before you got there, you reproduce it. So if, you're, if you've gone through suffering and pain and then that's what you uh, identified with, if you've gone through difficulty and suffering and lack and abuse and mistreatment, that's what you're going to carry into the new second, the new reality, and reproduce. Everybody's life is going to have ups and downs, uh, ebbs and flows, difficulties, <clears throat> disappointments, frustration. It's a part of life. Here, check this out. It's not the circumvention of life's vicissitudes and struggles 
that create the uh, phenomenal and the extraordinary. It's the perseverance that you, that you dis demonstrate in those moments that determine. It's the commitment to the cause, to the purpose, to the target, to the destination, to the destiny that determine, that determine what and who you will become. You've got to put your dreams to work. You've got to stop waiting on somebody else to open the door for you. You've got to stop waiting on somebody else to drop an opportunity in your lap. Opportunities don't fall out of the sky. They are discovered, uncovered, extracted, or created. You've got to wake up in the morning and say, you know what, this is what I'm doing. This is my goal. See, when you have goals, you wake up with an intent in mind. When you wake up, you wake up with a purpose in mind. You wake up with power in hand because you are executing your personal sovereignty. You're saying that I'm going to wake up and then this is what I'm going to do. I am going to get up and I'm going to go out and find an opportunity that works for me, that does what I needed to do. And, and if an opportunity doesn't exist, I'll create one. What I will not do is sit up and wait on somebody to discover me. I will not sit up and wait on somebody to give me uh, a, a permission. I'm not going to sit up and wait on somebody to validate my belief in myself. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go out. I'm going to do something about what it is that I say that I want. I'm not going to give power to, to, to all of the things that are around me that speak against me. See, I am going to do what I'm created and capable of doing. Use my mind to dispel the negativity and the opposition in my life to create the reality I want. You know, if you're a Christian, you call it calling things that are not as though they are. It, 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 it's about arresting any idea of thought any word spoken by you or anyone else that speaks against the destiny that you have chosen for yourself. If you don't have an understanding of why you're here, it gets lonely sometimes. If you don't have an understanding of why you're here, it becomes difficult to push through those frustrating moments of delay. If you don't have an understanding of why you're here, it can be awfully uh, disappointing when you hit a wall. Why? Because there's no reasoning behind it. There's nothing to explain it. But when you become acquainted with your purpose, it will explain your pain. You've got to get to a point where your purpose is explaining your movement, your experience. Your, 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 your moments. That's where you learn how to overcome. That's where you learn how to push through. That's where you learn how to hang tough. That's where you learn to stand up and shake off the dust. That's where you learn how to recover and push through. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut it down here, but this is what I want you to understand. Every time you experience some idea of some extravagant, extraordinary, phenomenal reality that you find yourself in the midst of, before you allow doubt to creep in, before you allow uh, this, this thing called reality to creep in and snatch you out of it and put you in your place, understand that the very, the very, fact that you are able to conceive that idea and see yourself in it, it's God's proof to you. It is the verification and the evidence that it's possible and that you have a right to it. Not based on where you come from, not based on what people think about you, not based on how people define your situation, not based on your current condition, but based solely on your design. Based solely on your design as it interacts with the universal laws put into place by the grand designer. When you start to use what's at your disposal and you stop giving power to all the negativity around you, you're going to find that you can do some exceptional and extraordinary things. You're going to find that the things you see in others that you think are beyond 
your capacity are within reach. You've got to live your life believing in you. Even when no one else does, you've got to develop a mindset that does not seek the approbation, approval, and validation of other people, that you use your life to uh, move upon the ideas and thoughts of other people to convince them that what they thought was impossible is possible. I don't wait on nobody to validate my next move. If I can see it in my mind, that's all the validation I need. Doesn't mean that I'm where I need to be to get it. Doesn't mean that I have all the pieces of the puzzle. It simply means it's possible. And I work from possibility. It doesn't have to be perfectly laid out for me. It doesn't have to be all set in front of me for me to see it. I just need to know that it's possible. And now I know that if I can see it, it's possible. Now, how much work am I willing to put in? That's the problem. That's the problem. A bunch of people got dreams. But very few are putting their dreams to work. They're going to work for somebody else's, but they won't put theirs into work. Because it comes with too many risks. See, they'll tie into somebody else's failures and be okay with it because it doesn't identify them as a failure. I don't care about how many times I fail. I'm more concerned about how many times I get up. Uh, if I get knocked down a thousand times, as long as I get up a thousand times, I'm good. Because you don't get knocked down that many times without trying that many times. Some of you haven't been knocked down too many times because you don't get out there. You got to put in the work. One percent of this world experiences 95% of what we consider success in all areas of life. That means 99% of the people on this planet just refuse to do what it takes to live their life at the level that they're capable of living it at. 99% are underachievers. And this is not about your money in your bank account. This is about living life at a level that's so fulfilled that you live in a constant state of joy. It doesn't mean that you don't have rough times. It doesn't mean that you don't experience loss. It doesn't it mean that you don't have moments of difficulty? It just simply means that you're living your life at such a level that the purpose that you live life explains your pain. It's time to wake up. It's time to step out of that place of, uh, of, of, of average mediocrity, casual living, just waking up every day doing what everybody else does and then being frustrated with why we have the same thing that everybody else has, pretty much give or take a little. In order to get what people don't have, you gotta be willing to do what people don't do. It's that simple. If everybody's waking up at 7.30 and eight o'clock, you're going to have to get up at 6.30. You're going to have to get up at 5.30. You're going to have to get up at 5. You're going to have to put in more time. You're going to have to stay up a little later. You're going to have to pass on some of them things that everybody, you can't turn up every time everybody else turn up because, see, you're not getting anything done. If you're not turning up to have a meeting with somebody about getting something done, that turning up has very little purpose. Yes, well, I need to have fun. I need to have fun. If you're living a life that what you do on a regular basis isn't fun to you, that's part of the problem. I'm not saying that you don't get out of enjoy. I'm not saying that you don't have a, earn the vacation. Stop taking a vacation and earn one. That's a difference. When you earn a vacation, the whole time you're on it, you're never thinking about what's going to happen wrong when you get back because you're not there. That's an earned vacation. When you ain't got to worry about what bills are going to be doing when you get back. When you ain't got to worry about how screwed up your company is because you haven't put it together right and you don't have all the pieces in place when you get back. All of those things that you worry about while you're on your vacation really negates the vacation. 
But when you earn a vacation, instead of taking one, when you get there, all the stuff that most people leave behind and got to return to, you return to it. It may be a couple things that happen while you were gone, but they'll easily fix it because you've got things set in motion. You know how you want your company run. You know how you have your family set up. You know how you do business. You know how you uh, have your education. Whatever you do, earn it. But if you haven't put it to work, it's just an idea in your head. It means absolutely nothing. It's a distraction, actually. Get up. Make up your mind what you're going to do. Believe that it's in your mind. God's giving you the, the wherewithal and, and the capacity to do it. Doesn't mean you got all the answers. You probably don't, because if you had all the answers, it would be done. But you got to go get them. Put the work in. Go get them. You can, I, I can tell you this, and I'm done. It won't take you long. You're built. Your your most prehistoric part of your brain is built to find what's wrong in your life. So that's the easiest thing for you to do is to find what's wrong. That's how you stay alive. Literally. That's how you survive and stay alive is to be able to dictate when something's wrong and a threat. That's easy. The hard part is being able to focus on what's right. What God gave you that nobody else has that gives you a place in this world that nobody else can move into but you. Find that. All those things that you can find that's wrong are there. And the only one that can change them is you. Now you can focus on it, what gives it power, or you can focus on what you're going to do about it, what gives you power. Have a good day. Like I said at the beginning of this, you need to learn how to set your intent. Don't enter moments without knowing what that moment means. Doesn't mean that you don't change if necessary or do something different if necessary, but you can't move into moments with an empty mind. Oh, whatever happens at this point of the day just happens. I don't know what, what you're going to be doing at three. Don't know. Hmm. The more don't know moments you have set for your day, the longer it's going to take you to get anywhere. Doesn't mean that what you have set for that moment is what you're going to do. But when you have intent, you have momentum. When you have momentum, you have force. So if you move into a moment and have to change, you change with force. You just switch gears. Okay, I was going to do this, but I'm doing this now because this is more important now. And you do it. And you don't lose momentum when you do it. You switch and you keep moving. But if you ain't got nothing planned, you get there and then it's just kind of you at the mercy of the day. You've got to win in the day, and you get to, you get a chance to win every moment, every second. But how you start your day is normally how you move your day. Set your intent. I'm out of here. Thank you guys for stopping. I hope something that you heard motivates you, inspires you, gives you an idea to go. If nothing else, it challenges you to think for yourself. You don't have to believe everything I say. You don't have to, but you got to start believing and thinking. For yourself. Stop buying other people's stories. Stop letting people write your stories. Stop letting people define, define you. Start living with, with, with a sense of purpose in mind. Ask yourself, why am I here? And I guarantee you, if you're truthful with yourself and you ask yourself, why am I here? Not one of you are going to say, I'm here to suffer. That's it. You guys have an awesome day. Peace. Mm -hmm.